Hey guys, what is up? I'm motherfucking Oki here, and today is going to be a bard coaching session. So this is this is a player by the name of Mistakes, uh, who ordered a coaching session. This is a plat three player, but I believe uh, this game was played three days ago. I believe at the time it was played in around plat one elo. So actually, what I want to talk about is um, plat one high plat is actually uh, one of my favorite elos to coach because by that time uh, you're kind of together as a player. You know what's going on. You're not literally like figuring out what champions do. You're not encountering things that you haven't played before. You know the game, and it's kind of like the first step into high elo into being a good player. Uh, that being said, there are also very, very obvious and basic fundamental mistakes still being made. So I just really like coaching and observing games at this level. Uh, because, you know, it's not just like bronze fives running at each other for 40 minutes straight. You can actually, you know, say this is what went wrong, this is what went right. Uh, one thing that went wrong, and I n you probably know I'm going to rag on you for this. Uh, I'm all about proactivity as a player. Um, this, this stuff right here, this pisses me off. Uh, when players are not stacking when players are not getting vision out you could be getting invaded right here and it could all be avoided these guys could die and you would probably get mad at them and say something like they're not paying attention or something but the reality is you didn't do your part you showed up to the game late uh sometimes things happen sometimes you know your dog needs let out or uh your house is on fire or you know there are extreme cases but i'm all about proactivity uh the players that actually show up and start playing the game at the first second that the game starts are usually the ones that win so we're going to turn off fog of war I'm assuming you show up to the game at some point. This isn't just 30 minutes of AFKing. Alright, so there we have it. The very first mistake. You are super, super, super late to the game. Um, let's see how long does it take you to get here. And it's not just about, you know, caring about the game or showing up to the game on time. It's about It's about this mindset of proactivity. I want you to go out and make the win happen. I don't want you to sit there and just, you know, hope you get carried or, you know, kind of bumble into the game whenever you want. Show up to the game, buy your items, and start pinging your team to set up vision or invade. You know me. I'm a very aggressive player. I like to be proactive and invade. Alright, so we are kind of wandering around in... the mid lane when really you should be uh, actually setting up either cheesing this bush or this bush you are against a kale nami it looks like you guys would definitely win that level one uh you should definitely cheese this bush for them Oop. okay i'm gonna lock it on bard where are you there you are all right so let's look into your laning phase Still not locking, huh? There we go. Okay, okay. Pretty standard level one. Maybe took one one too many autos from Kale. Um, also, I give the option to uh, my coaching customers to give me things that they want to me to specifically touch on. And just getting this out in the open, uh, Mistakes wants me to learn how to transition as lead, when to roam, and how to close out a game. So how to not just get ahead and not know what to do with it, essentially. That was a really good trade. I'm assuming there's not going to be too much violence coming out of this bot lane. Uh, oh, that is a great stun right as Rengar comes in. So you want to all in. You don't want to hit that and walk away. You want to hit that stun and instantly start cutting down here because your auto's slow. Your autos are basically tools that junglers look for when they're looking to gank. See, your way back here, when really when you landed that stun, that was a fantastic time to start walking up. Because now you guys don't really have any pressure on them. They might have been baited into going in all in on you. They might have been saying, hey, Bard wants to fight, we'll fight, we'll fuck him up. Uh, but unfortunately, you landed that Q and kind of walked backwards. And I don't think that this gank is going to turn into anything because of that. Whereas before, it probably could have resulted in at least summoners coming out of uh, Kale. So yeah, th that was a pretty big mistake. The, the Q was fantastic. The Q hit the Q, walk forward, auto attack, auto attack, auto attack. Try to bait them into fighting as your jungler approaches. Because now at this point, you've now wasted Rengar's time. He's lower than he was before. Uh, he's in more danger of getting dueled by the enemy jungler, Kane, who's not too shabby. It's looking like you're walking up to the jungler now. Okay. So yeah, you don't want to cost your jungler... You don't want to piss your jungler off. You want to. You don't want to literally cost them. This was very, very forced, but it turns out it worked. I like it. Good. Very good opportunity taken, man. I. I appreciate that. 
That's what I'm talking about, though, though that, that proactivity. So when I do coaching sessions, I want to point out the things that you do good that impress me and also the things that piss me off. So that's my, that's my style of coaching. When you do something good, I'm going to point it out. And that was pretty good. Risky, but, but good. Well executed. If you're going to be a risky, proactive player, <laughs> you better be able to execute on it. Okay, immediately, you guys probably want to start channeling your back. Yeah, okay, good. You're, you're wasting kind of like two or three seconds here and there, and, you know, usually that doesn't cost you, but sometimes League of Legends is a game of inches, and sometimes that one or two seconds that you didn't channel your back, you know, maybe Nami comes over here with a jungler and catches you because you, uh, you, uh, you hesitated. You didn't do what you knew you should be doing immediately. So you just upgraded your item and got, got you some boots. That's good. I'm also not noticing uh, that you're pinging summoners. I don't think you've pinged any of their summoners. Yeah, I don't think you have. So ping when teleport's used, ping when you see that cane flash, especially when you're walking back to lane, you literally have nothing to be doing. You know you're not going to be running into the jungler because you see him over here. So be watching the game and ping those enemy summoners for your teammates. Be proactive. They're, don't assume that they're going to do it. They should, uh, but relying on solo queue teammates to do things that they should is uh, a really bad road to go down. Okay, so what you should notice about this is that you're not taking minion aggro, so you know that there's no vision here. So wait for them to put down the ward and then auto queue them. Okay. Just taking in information here. You know they're both of them are there, and you're walking forward into a two v one. You know your ADC can't follow. This is bad. You could get bubbled here. You could take a lot of, lot, a lot of damage. Yeah, Kais is busy farming, and you know from the blind queue that they're both there. So yeah, if that if that bubble landed on you, you're in trouble. I like the blind queue, but once you see that it hits both of them, just back out. You don't want to. Because really all you have left at that point to trade with is your autos. They played this very poorly, uh, but just because something worked doesn't mean it was correct. Uh, I like this presence. I like the fact that they are weak under their turret. You're not letting them back there. You're not letting them really do much of anything. I worry about you taking free Ws like that. Uh, the thing about Nami's W is that she actually has to stand still to cast it. So if you wait for, if you know that that's the trade that you want to take, like if you have in your head, like you're walking up for a reason, right? You have something, you have like a script, you have something that you want to happen. If the trade that you want to take is trading your Q and auto with Nami's W, wait for her to cast it. She actually has to stand still, which makes for a really, really easy bard Q target. But I like the presence. I like the fact that you're walking up, you're not standing behind your ADC, you're not just, you know, bumbling around. Uh, this is pushed to turret, so this is a really, really good roam. You haven't stepped on any wards. Make sure you step... I, I don't know if you stepped into this bush. This is a really, really popular... Uh, popular control ward position. And could totally waste your time. Yep, you didn't step into this bush. Make sure you're hitting this bush when you roam. I don't think you stepped into it. Yeah, let's say, for instance, this is control warded. You stepped over that, didn't even see it or clear it. You're wasting your time at this point. But this is a good room. Rome. Uh, fundamentally, this is a, a good room. It was pushed to the turret. Kaisa wants to back anyways. Um, at this point, I really wouldn't even be roaming up into this. I would just be helping Galio shove this because uh, the point of roams is to cost the enemy team something, right? If you help Galio shove this, he's weak. He might even want to, want to be going back and the wave's going to freeze right here. If you shove this to the turret, the mid laner is missing CS off all of this. Whereas this, you're just kind of like walking at them. I don't think anything's going to come out of this. If they play it correctly. Oh boy. Yep. It's good that you guys got the kill, but honestly, that's not even worth it. Because at this point, you've dragged your team into an un, a, a, a terrible dive, frankly. Uh, you so far traded two for three. You've wasted way more of your team's time than their time. Uh, the correct call here, the roam was good, 
but I would have just shoved this wave in. Doing all this stuff is really, really unnecessarily risky. You've cost your team a lot. Uh, Trendomir's ult, yours and Rengar's life, and the kill win on you, which, you know, I'm all about support lives matter and everything, but what are you going to do with that gold? You know, Kane is going to be way more efficient with that gold than you are. I like the Moby Boots, uh, Moby Boots uh, buy, though. Some games you want to be looking into buying Swifties, like if they have a lot of really, really easy poke to land. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think that this is actually a really good team to buy Mobies into. Here's the thing, though. You're making a huge trade-off. Again, careful careful checking these bushes. We, we haven't had vision for them for a while. Let's say they... Historically, they stacked here before. So if you're walking into a bubble, that's the death before Kaisa can respond. Um, but as I was saying, there's some you're making a big trade-off because you're not doing Moby Boots, or uh, excuse me, Merc Treads, and Merc Treads are actually good against every single one of these guys. So I like the Moby Boots buy, but make sure you put it to use. Make sure you don't just buy Moby Boots, because Merc Treads here are, is the much, much safer option. Okay, again, wait for that, wait for a bubble, wait for the W, wait for, wait for something from Nami. Uh, to make sure you land your Q. Also, if the you guys haven't really been under your turret at all this game, I would look less at putting the W's back here because that way you have to you have to make a you know pilgrimage back to your turret. Whereas you could be putting them right here, and that's just another aspect of getting pressure. Like having to walk back here to versus having to walk right here is actually a really really big difference because let's say something terrible happens you know ADC's you know how I feel about ADC's let's say Kaisa is feeling herself and tries to 2v1 while you're right here if you just had the uh, if you just have your W right here you'd be able to respond to that so it's just all about building pressure I like this one here honestly I would be stacking them in this bush though because the wave keeps bouncing bouncing to the point where you, sometimes you lose control of this bush okay good good roam good awareness All right, they didn't need you though. They didn't need you. You're turning this Roman into something productive. I like this. He just used his shift. He just used his shift. Great stun. Great, great stun. Unfortunately, not enough damage coming out of your team. But these are really, really good roams. I th I feel like you as a player, you know when and how to roam. Um, you're just not making the most of them. Like that roam earlier was a pretty big, pretty big red flag. But I do like that you're like being super, super active on the map. If you can, if you can nail down what exactly you're supposed to be doing when you roam, I feel like you sh you're you're gonna climb really far. Oh no, 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 no! Don't don't even think about taking that tunnel. Don't even like put it there and encourage your team to take it. After you got the flash, that's all. You you have too little too little information about what's over here to be even tempting your team to go through those. All right. Ping the, ping the flash. Good shit. Good shit. Honestly, man, I would be channeling back. Kais is just farming. You're not uh, high enough high enough um, health to be doing anything here. You do see them stacking on a ward, but honestly, man, it's not even worth the risk. Yeah. It's really not worth the risk. You guys are really low. You, you don't really have any resources. You don't have your ult. Uh, she doesn't have mana. You guys are both low on health. I would have just channeled your back there. Um, and I would have... Uh, if you and Kai said both channeled your back instead of doing uh, that trade there, you guys would be back to lane if you started walking immediately. By the time they push the wave to the turret, you wouldn't even miss any CS. This doesn't seem like a very good roam. You should have channeled back. This is the first bad roam that I've seen out of you. Um... There's not really any mission objective here. Uh, you know they have vision here. You know that even if it was a good roam, they would see it coming. Rengar's already shoving it to turret. This is that was a bad roam. You should have just channeled back like a minute and a half ago. Are you? What are you? I'm curious what you're building. Are you going Nasher's tooth? Alright, good bush control. 
again, you're checking this bush a lot, man. They've now stacked in that bush three times. They really like doing the duo stack here. And the fact that you're face checking it is a little worrying. You know, it's safe to assume that they backed because you lost vision of them while you were making your trek back to lane. But you never know, man. And that's honestly a death trap. If you get bubbled by them, I'm hoping it happens just one time during this game just so I can, like, make a... Uh, demonstration of how like effective the Nami bubble is against someone like Bard. Okay, this is still kind of hard, man. You're gonna have to predict his shift here. Yeah, you needed to put push it this way because it's a really low cooldown, and uh, things like Zonia's and Bard's all that's basically a big usage for. This is a good word though. Uh, that's that's a really good u basic usage of Cassidy is that sometimes he'll do Zonia himself waiting for his ulti cooldown to come back up. So when you're Bard ulting him, this is a good idea, but instead of shooting it at there, you have to assume that it's up and shoot it this way. See, if you, if you had saved your ulti because you know Kale is an immobile champion with no flash up, I would honestly be saving my ulti for something less risky. Galio is not really even a damage heavy champion, so let's say you, you did make a godly predict, stun him against the turret after catching him in your ulti, what then? Uh, I don't think Galio has the juice in him to, to dive that. Whereas uh, this is a much safer bet. So try to save your ulti and like think about like how much easier it is to land and actually get something out of landing it on immobile champions. Immobile champions are like, oh my god, I love playing against them. Because like with champions like Leona, champions like Bard, it's just so much easier to get stuff done. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Getting t you, you pulled the TP out though. Okay, instant, instant uh, cancel. A lot of, lot of pressure coming out of bot. I like it. You haven't had to really f play against their jungler, though. Which has been nice. Yeah, care careful, man. Careful. I'm telling you, that bubble will tear your asshole open. Alright, here's the jungle, though. A little more patience needs to come out of you here. A little more patience. Um, really, there's no reason for you to shoot it right now. You can't stun him against anything. I understand it was for damage and for the slow. But he, in order to get to you, he's got to walk at you and place him between you. Like, let's say, as you continue pathing that way, this way, he has to path, if he's going for you, which is obvious, it, it's obvious that he is, he has to place himself between you and the wall. If he's pathing at you. Do you understand that? Again, very, very risky. Bad tunnel. Bad tunnel. Good outcome, but really, really bad tunnel. I mean, borderline suicidal there. I like this. I like the fact that you're instantly channeling back. I'm telling you, man, if you squeeze out, if, if you start, um, nope, you should have you channeled the whole back. There's nothing for you to do here. You actually even see that both of them are just ding-donging around. Not really looking to kill Kai'Sa, just... Well, maybe they are stacking. You really need to have backed, though. I still think that you should have backed there. It's just so risky, man. It's just so risky what you're doing. There's the bubble. And there's the deletion. So it did happen. I knew it would, man. I could tell by the way that you are playing that you are eventually going to get punished for not respecting that Nami bubble so often. Uh, so yeah, you had the right idea. I was really, really happy that you channeled your back. Uh, I was a little less happy that you unchanneled it and decided to kind of run it down there. I just don't think you're respecting like how how um, you are building Asher's Tooth, how uh, how squishy you are, and how efficient that like one. I think Nami uh, Nami bubble is 1.5 seconds of CC, and when you have someone that can follow up and deal consistent DPS damage like Kale, that's that's a death sentence. Um, you've made some good. You've made some good decisions. You've had good presence, but you're not respecting. Okay, and, and again, like, let's say this is a perfect. This is a perfect ulti. You land it here. You got both of them. There's just nothing that Galio can do against these guys. He he just does no damage, man. He's not a high. Like maybe if you had a LeBlanc instead of uh, a utility tank like Galio in your, in your uh, mid lane. 
but even a perfect ulti would have resulted in nothing there. You really should start holding on to your ulti for champions like Kale or Nami even. Like it's just so much easier to blow them up. Oof. Yeah, man. You got to respect, especially now that we're hitting like into the mid game. You know, Kale's got some items on her. You got to respect, man. You got to respect. I also um I don't know, it, it, it's tough because you might be a, a really, really, you know, like a almost a bard one trick and like you've built your play style around being able to play this aggressively and building items like the Stinger and I'm guessing you're going Nashers, um, but that's not an item that I would ever recommend on bard. Uh, here I would have gotten probably, let's say, I, I would probably say Redemption is a good item here, mostly because uh, I would play, I would, I would build that uh, based on the idea that they have champions like Kane and Orn, so you know exactly where team fights are going to occur because they have these big windups. Like for instance, if Kale ults your ADC, you can just drop Redemption. Uh, if Orn ults, you can just drop Redemption and negate a lot of that damage. But again, if this is the build that's working for you and this is the build that you know how to play, I've seen weirder shit work on Bard. He's actually a really versatile character when it comes to builds. Good stun, good stun. Nothing coming out of it though. That's fine. You played that fine there. Make sure you're hitting this bush. Make sure you're hitting this bush when you sweep. You don't. You want to get the most out of your sweeper. And since uh, you're in a pretty safe position right here, you had time to walk up and. and uh, clear it. Alright, now this is a good all, baby. This is a good one. Good shit. Unfortunate about Rengar, but that was a great ulti. Oof. Need a little more patience coming out of these Qs. <laughs> but did it, what was with you standing still for a second there? Did you just like accept your death for a millisecond? You're just like, well, this is the end of my life. I like it. I'm assuming you're waiting for like a Q cooldown or something. It just looked kind of funny. Alrighty. Clear and vision. Good stuff, good stuff. Honestly, this is actually the opposite of what I recommended you to do last time. You don't have Galio here to help you clear the wave, and you yourself, are, it's going to take you a long time to clear this. Whereas there's some pretty interesting shut th that's going on up here, especially since you have your ulti. Uh, this is actually a situation where I'm going to recommend the opposite. You should have continued your pathing up here uh, instead of pushing the wave. Yeah, I think this is actually that might have actually been salvageable, at least to help your your teammates get out. But it's not a, it's not a huge deal. They most likely would have died regardless. But it's all it's all just about building presence. Now, what I would recommend is that if you're going to commit to to clearing the wave, the second it's cleared, just leave. Just leave, because you know they're coming. You know they'd see you. Yeah, again, man, you're just not respecting how mobile these champions are. If they see you, they can catch you. If, if it's casted in with full mana bar, he can just catch you, like, no matter what. So I think your biggest issue is honestly not knowing when to roam. You do know when to roam. Let me, let me make this very clear. You know when to roam. You just don't know how to get the most out of roaming, it looks like. You know the fact that like you should roam when there's not necessarily anything for you to do in lane, when maybe you're pushed up, when you don't think you have kill potential, things like that. But you just don't know how to get the most out of your roam. If you can find a way to, get, to squeeze the most efficiency out of these roams, um, you're, you're going to be doing a lot better. I promise you that. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw back I'm gonna jump back just to see how close this bard alt was, uh, because it gets it gets monumentally harder to bard alt from down the lane like this, and your turret isn't really about to die. You you still have a couple seconds to get a little bit closer. Like 
A bar alt from here is actually so much easier than a bar alt from here. Let's see where you shoot it from. Hmm. It wasn't terrible, but yeah, I I still would have gotten I still would have walked up a little bit further up here. Would have been a much easier shot. Damn. Okay. You survived. It's a one for one. It's not terrible. A uh, little more patience coming out of your bard alt and bard cues is going to do you wonders, man. And it's situations like this that if you just had a redemption, the second that comes out, you know who he's going for, you could just drop it on top of him. Yeah, I think that you should consider doing a kind of more utility focused bard builds, honestly. Bard's a really weird champion. He's got he's got one of the most unique kits in the game, and you need to like build around the, that fact. Like he doesn't supply utility like any other champion. He's not like a Janna or a Soraka. Um, you know, he leaves health packs and uh, strategic placement of those, uh, along with like the fact that you can stack utility items like Mikhail's redemptions. Uh, you know, even lock it if it comes down to it. Like that's the shit that you need to be squeezing the most out of kits like Bard. You know, he does have lockdown, he does have stasis, he does have, you know, a weird Q hitbox that stuns two people at once for God knows what reason. Um, but one thing that, he, like, he does all that shit that no other champion does, but guess what a lot of champions do? A lot of champions do a lot of damage. So you shouldn't build around the fact that he does damage because at that point you should just be playing brand. If your point, if your uh, playstyle as a support is to just blow the shit out of one person blow up the shit out of one person jesus capra pride um you should just be playing brand uh so that's why i think that building things like attack speed and nash's tooth on bard isn't for me personally but again it's not an objective thing i do know bards that build this kind of stuff i just never really agreed with it you know it would be building like a, it would be like building attack speed leona we're like that's not really what leona's supposed to do <laughs> She's supposed to build tanky so that when she goes in and locks one person down, uh, she can survive it. But enough about Leona. Let's see what you got going on here, man. So we, I want to point out, I don't think we've had vision. I don't think you've dropped a ward on the Baron this entire game. Um, and that goes for Rift Herald as well. So, um, you know, you, I think you only made one trek up into this area. But especially during mid game, like getting control of that herald and making sure they aren't doing a 20 minute baron, those are things that you'd be surprised how often it happens. And when it does happen, it, it, it would close out a game like this. Like a, a game that you're already kind of like trailing behind in, you would, uh, you would probably lose it. Oof. Close. Honestly, Ben, you know you, you you know that you had numbers coming here. I think that that was kind of like a panicked alt, um, because you realized your your life bar was quickly disappearing. You knew you had numbers coming, so like even if you're still full health and you're not afraid of dying, just like alt yourself and them, like give your team time to come collapse on this because you knew you had numbers coming. You knew you guys were gonna win the fight. It's at that point, it's just about minimizing casualties on your end. But yeah, no, no vision on uh, Baron or Dragon. I guess we got vision over here. Okay. Oof. Kaisakot. They are. I w I would imagine that they would just do Baron off this. That's a pretty big deal. They see Galio bot. And they just caught the ADC and the Trindomeric. Yeah, they should be doing Baron off this. Little more patience with the Qs, man. Little got it. Need that patience. Oh nope, nope. Bad idea. Bad, bad, bad idea. Let him go at that point, buddy. Let him go at that point. Path around this way if you have to. I don't like seeing tunnels like this directly into their lockdown tank. Oh, 
Yep, this is not going to end well. Okay, one for one. Uh, they're pushing top, though, so you guys did lose out ultimately on this. So at this point, it's kind of just become like one of those famous Plat 1 Fiestas. Uh, no real thought or strategies going into it. It's kind of hard to coach moments like this uh, or games like this when it just evolves. But that that happens in a... Oh, I just skipped forward on accident. Okay. Kayla and Nami are dead. We're waiting for you to respond. Sorry about that. Okay, so ask yourself, why are you going bot? Are you bodyguarding Kaisa? Because I think that Kaisa actually has the survivability. She has her flash up and she has her ulti up. You should actually be hovering topside. If they see two people bot, you're just giving them another reason to go set up Baron. They're not going to be doing it immediately because Kayla and Nami are there. But at this late into the game, uh, especially as a roaming champion like you, like you, you have a lot of presence in areas like this. Not so much when you're just kind of sitting here in a bush and like leeching EXP off Kaisa. Um, she needed to clear that wave. You didn't. And uh, positioning and macro mistakes like that are basically what close out games. Uh, for instance, like if you watch higher elo games, if an ADC or a jungle shows bot or two people show bot at this point in the game when they're this far ahead and they know that they can fight you and they've got like good team fight alties like uh, or an ulti and they can bait you into the Baron they're gonna start the Baron this team didn't yet because they're not they're not you know diamond 2 diamond 3 whatever but I guarantee you in a, in a standard diamond 3 game which I'm assuming that's what you want to climb to you want to get out of plat and you're taking tremendous steps towards doing it like I said you know when to roam but I'll go over that at the end I'm telling you in a, in a mid diamond game a team would be doing Baron right now because they saw two people bot. Even if they have no intention of actually doing the Baron, they know they're ahead so they can just bring you over to Baron. So careful careful being in places that you don't necessarily need to be. Kaisa needed to be there. Someone needed to be there to clear the wave. Um, you did not. So I don't think it necessarily cost you, but I want to prepare you because in, in higher elos, that will cost you. Okay, still again, you, you need more patience with the ult. I don't I don't know how else to say. It. You really really need to be more patient with this ults. Um I think that you're trying to like cancel Orn's second part out of it and that's just too forced. He's going to get it off. Yeah, you're so you're trying to cancel the second part of it. It's not fast enough to do that. Whereas if you had held on to your ulti and waited for them to dive or, you know, been able to turn the turret or the turn the tables on them just be more patient be a little more like analytical with your alts and careful 1v1ing the cane over here man see if you had your ulti right now you could be oh my lord you could be denying so much dps out of kale okay Okay, good bait. Alright, Trindomir died in bot, so now you guys want to be on damage control. You don't want to be fighting this necessarily, you want to be way, way, way back here. So if you get caught by that bubble, you get caught by that cane knockup, you're dead zo. You want to be stalling. You got 30, 40 seconds where it's um, in their favor, basically. So you're playing pretty safe. It's scary that you keep walking up like that. I really don't think you're respecting Kane or, or uh, Cassidy, in especially, this whole game. Because, like, yeah, that, that cost him literally nothing. And it cost you all of... You want to think of your health like a resource. You want to spend it wisely. And that is not at all spending it wisely. Ooh, man. This is not good. At, at this point, just channel... You should have channeled your back, like, 10 seconds ago. I actually assumed that you were channeling your back. Yeah, you're no use to people here. This is one casted in R. Q, and you're dead. You're no use to people like that. Man, your build is just wild. I love it. 
Yeah, see what I mean? It was literally, like I said, one cast in an RQ. Whereas, like, if you had a full health bar, if you had channeled your back and came back with a full health bar, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Because at that point, he has to commit, like, two, three R's to chasing you down. And who knows what's going to happen in that span of time. But if you're just one RQ from death, like, yeah, you, you've given him no reason not to jump on you. You just need to, uh... You just need to be a little more protective of your health bar. Especially if you're going to be building like this. This is Glass Cannon Bard. So there it is. There's the forfeit. Um, the main points on you... Um, so you, you said uh, you want to learn how to transition your lead, when to roam, and how to close a game out. Those are actually all connected for you. If you learn how to efficiently roam, there are two times when I disagreed that you shouldn't be roaming at all, or you should be like committing to different things. If you can learn how to more efficiently roam and uh, just you know analyze like what should I be doing and why. like You know when to roam, you know what to be doing, but then you don't know what to do when you do it. If that makes sense like you don't know how to capitalize the most out of a roam or or minimize damage um, so learn how to efficiently roam I like the fact that you're out on the board that you're proactive I don't like the fact that you showed up to the game late but again that happens I'm sure you didn't do it on purpose um, but yeah I like that you're being proactive I like that you're having your presence in lane is really really good uh, you are not respecting at all. You didn't respect the Nami bubble like 10 to 20 times, seriously. Um, and they capitalized on it like three times maybe, but like not even joking, like 20 times there could have been really good bubbles that would have resulted in your death. You're not uh, you're not respecting the Nami bubble, and you're definitely not respecting Kassadin. Uh So learn to roam efficiently, learn to respect those that can delete you, and uh, what was the last thing that I wanted to say? Um, oh, patience. Patience with your bard cues and patience with your bard ults. You had like one or two really good ults and one or two ults that were just like, you could tell you were just like panicking. Um, or trying to do too much with it, I guess. Like trying to cancel the Ornal is just um, foolish. Like that's not going to happen. It comes out so fast. Um, and, you know, maybe you lock him down. You, you miss the ult, but let's say you, you miss. Uh, he still gets his second proc of his ult off. It sends the uh, the horn, the ram thing into the team fight, um, and then you lock him down. Okay, well he's already done the damage. He's already gotten his huge team fight knock up. Like it doesn't matter if he's locked down at that point. So be less ambitious and more patient with your alts and your cues, um, and also consider building a little more utility focused. This is this glass cannon bard. I just don't know, man. Like that's really really cheesy. But again, that's up to playstyle. But uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. Mistakes, if you have any questions, please let me know. You can message me on Twitch, um, on Discord, anything. Uh, but thanks for watching, boys. I hope you guys learned something. Peace!